All right, what's up? Shout out Anthony Smith. As the title suggests, we, we talk, I want to talk about um, you know, mental health as it relates to you know, creating, uh, mostly writing on my part, because that's what I do, I mostly write. I try to dabble in some filmmaking, but that's a work in progress, because I had to get some film equipment. But, uh, yeah, mostly write like, prose, poetry, short stories, trying to fucking write a novel. We'll see what happens with that. But, uh, so over the years, I've had my own issues with mental health. I've talked about it on this channel before with depression, rage, just having something inside, you know, up here and shit. And,. So one thing I've so I've been writing since I was thirteen, and when I was from the, from thirteen till I would say my early twenties, yeah, I'll say early twenties. I did not have this problem, especially when I, especially throughout high school, uh, you know, at eighth grade through high through twelfth grade, I didn't have this particular issue, which is like my mental health affecting writing. Cause I didn't really start to have mental health issues that like shit was, just, I mean, I'd have flashes here and there in middle in, in high school. But the real shit didn't really start until like senior year of high school. Uh, it really, once I graduated, that's when shit really popped off. And I've noticed there's like, it seeps into the creative process. It's like, I don't feel like I can create shit, whether it's writing or just trying to come up with, you know, short film ideas, poetry, uh, unless it's like rooted in my own depression or rage. It's like, it has to come from that. It's like, there's nothing good I can pull creativity from. Like all my creativity can only come from like that dark side of my mind. And I was weird, it's like, it makes me not want to write, it makes me not, not want to write or create or make shit. Cause it's like, I don't want to sit there for hours, days, months, weeks, however long it takes to make a project, forcing myself to sit in like a state of depression or a state of rage to put, to be able to create art, to make, to write a story, to make a short film. I want it to come from a, like a, a more pure place again, like it used to back when I was younger. And I don't know how to do that. I've tried to force myself to be able to do that. And I can't, it's like whenever I try to write, the best part of my writing, I was like, I feel like I only write good shit when I'm letting it come from that, that side. It's like, even when I try to force myself to write from that light side, it, it can't happen. Or whatever I write is just no good. And as far as you know, how I judge how right my writing, I want my writing to be. If it's you know, good or if it's beautiful or if it's deep or whatever the fuck. And it's like, it's like I want it to feel how it used to feel. I mean, there are times when I'm like in letting myself go into that state, and go like tap into that dark side to write, and it feels good. It somewhat feels like it used to, but I'm also kind of that's kind of something else to it. It's because like I know where it's coming from. I know where the writing is coming from, and it's like I don't want to continually tap into that because I don't know how to, it's like, I feel like, it's like I could control it at first, but then it's like, it starts to like completely take over. Yeah, I don't want to keep messing with that over and over again. And I'm not really sure it's healthy to keep messing with that. Um, no matter how good the writing was or how good the art could be, if I've, you know, once projects are finished and put out, uh, but yeah, so I ended up doing like a lot of research on mental health and creativity and 
if artists are more prone to have mental issues, you know, I see a lot of musicians and actors and shit, you know, committing suicide or getting hooked on drugs. And I would assume if they get hooked on shit, they have to get a deal with something. You don't get hooked on anything just to do it. They, if you're hooked on something, it's to deal with a, just to, just normally to cope with shit. That's normally a, what would cause someone to get hooked on something that they could potentially overdose on or just fuck their whole life up or whether it's self, the OD on drugs, or just be an alcoholic and just, you know, eventually die of liver failure or some shit. But it's like, now I want to look into, you know, is there a link between art artistry and mental health and also intelligence and mental health? Because I'm not saying I'm the smartest person in the world, but I feel like I've taken enough, I've taken enough tests, you know, IQ wise to know I'm at least, I'm at least smarter than most. I'm at least in the upper half. <laughs> I think my test scores for at least say, at least point to that. I'm at least in the upper half, at least uh, IQ wise. Uh, I would say for mental health reasons, I haven't necessarily gotten the results my IQ would uh, suggest I should have, but it's there at least, at least as far as the test scores are concerned. But, uh, but most of this video I want to focus on uh, the art side, the creativity side, and how it relates to mental health. And I think they said like the, I mean, there's tests and studies that have shown that there is a link, and there's tests and studies that have shown there isn't a link. Uh, I, probably, I, I think, but I know there were tests and shit. There, was, there were studies that showed there was a link between being creative and having bad mental health. And I, I don't fucking remember what the reasoning they gave in the studies and shit. But I think if, you know, if I had to rationalize it myself, just being smart, I would think it would be like, because a creative person's mind is more unique, it can make you, it can isolate. Kind of is the same reason for the, the intelligence area too, because it's like, if you think differently and you will feel more isolated from people because people don't think like you do which can lead to depression if you're feeling too isolated and you don't want to be isolated. Or if you, even if you do want to feel is be isolated, it can still lead to depression and lead to a lot of shit. Because then it's almost like two separate um, things working against each other. It's like your natural um, state of wanting to be alone, but your humanities natural state of wanting to be around other people. So it's like you have, it's like you have two parts that aren't, that aren't in sync. And it's just that is like, that is that you, you, you feel isolated and you, or you isolate, become isolated because you're just too different and people don't, people don't want to fuck with you or you don't want to fuck with other people or both or just, you just never meet people who you really mesh with. Um, another part of it is by having, being more creative or being more intelligent, you think too much. You think too fucking much. And you drive, you, like literally drive yourself crazy overthinking everything because that's just the way your mind works. You always think of Everything that can go wrong, and you so it will cause you to not act when you should act, and you think of um, everything that can go right, and you you act when you shouldn't act. You know, you always, whereas regular people go, you, know, you you tend not to go the regular route because you you consider all the possibilities of what could happen if you don't go the regular route, the good and the bad. And you just feel more inclined to go the opposite way, which they, they could end up going right. And things work out, but a lot of times it doesn't work out because if it did work out more often, more people would take that route. But more people don't take that route because it, don't, it normally doesn't work. 
And that could be about a majority, different type of shit, whether it's you trying to go be an entrepreneur or you trying to go, you know, be an artist and make money off your art and then always failing. It could be about, um, I mean, I guess those doesn't make the main two. You know, well, most people just go get a job and just stay at that, just stay working at the job, whether they stay at the same job or they bounce from job to job, they stay working so they can pay their bills, all that, or they go get a degree so they can do the same thing but just make more money doing it. But if you take that other route, the art, like the artist route or the entrepreneurial route, then you put yourself in a position where it's like you, you do it because your mind, just your mind moves you in that direction and your mind just desires it so much that you just almost gotta do it. But on the bad side of that, when it, if it doesn't work out, which it most likely won't work out, now, now you have all these mental issues, all this depression and shit, or all this regret. I'll give you the label, what if I just went the normal route? All about not really realizing that the reason why you didn't go the normal route is because your brains don't function that way. Um, but yeah, I'm circling back to the main thing I want to get into about this video, which was the whole, you know, me not wanting to, not wanting to tap into my depression and my rage to write because as much as I like to think I can control it to make art, it doesn't always work out that way. And sometimes I'll start out tapping into it to write something. Um, and then it like just takes over and I'm just sitting there. Um, Depressed, don't know what the fuck to do next, can't pull myself out of it, or in a rage, and just sitting there in, like in a rage, you know, just seeing red about everything, and unable to shake it. When it started out with me in control, using it to write, so it's like it comes this stance where I'm like, well, shit. Do I make art or do I not make art? How can I make art if I can't make art unless I'm tapping into this dark side? But if I tap into it and I can't pull myself back out, then that just creates a very, very bad cycle. And it's just as bad as, you know, artists who use drugs to help make their art. Who, you know, I mean, there was this one time Lil Uzi was like in a studio and he said he was like trying to get sober and he was just sitting in a studio with like writer's block or creative block. Couldn't make anything because he just he was, because he was, he always made his shit while high. So I don't know what he did to solve that. I don't know if he's back on the drugs or if he eventually got past it and he's clean. But I guess, I don't know. I think one thing I've tried to do to get myself back to that spot where I used to be in high school, where like I said, I still had flashes, but I could write without having to just tap in the dark, this dark side of myself. Um, I'm trying to read more again, because I used to read a hell of a lot back then. Um, that's also another thing that kind of fell off when I graduated, and I'm not sure if my mental health went because I stopped reading or if I stopped reading because my mental health went. I don't know which came first. I honestly don't. Um, but honestly, if I had to really think about it, I think the mental health went first. I don't think, I think the mental health went before the, went before the reading did. Because one thing I do notice is that it is really hard for me to read when I'm like, mentally not in a good spot. And I would say like my senior of high school, which is really when the, the, the reading drop started and like really started on the decline. I really wasn't in a good spot mentally for like most of my senior year of high school. So yeah, so I'm trying to you know, really 
force myself to read again to get myself to like a better spot mentally where I could make art without tapping into you know my depression and my rage and using those two things to make art with um to the power of my creativity but um you know, that's the situation I guess Let me, yeah, so let me know if you've had any experience with what I've been talking about in this video. If you made it this far, if you have any experience with this shit, uh, you know, using your depression, or if you have mental health issues, using your mental health issues as like fuel to make art with, and if you've, how has that worked out for you? Has it like, are you unable to pull yourself back sometimes? Or you just you just not do that shit because you already know you're not gonna be able to spoil yourself back. Um, or if if you went there, but you'll be able to circle back around and be able to start making art from a better place. How did you do that? And, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Cash up in the description for if you wanna donate to the channel. A uh, link to my short stories on Amazon on Kindle for a dollar each. In the, uh, also in the description. My social media is also in the description. And yeah, this channel, I talk about shit. I talk about life and philosophy and shit. I try to get a little deep with it sometimes. And I also just make ASMR videos and do book reviews, more reviews, shit like that. This is really like an like all-purpose channel, but yeah, I'll see you in the next video.